Next on Newsmax Prime, remembering 9-11. George Pataki was governor of New York on that fateful day 14 years ago. He'll offer his recollections on how what he learned then helps him now in his pursuit of the presidency. Then who's the best presidential candidate for evangelicals? The president of the Family Research Council answers that question and talks about his new book. Plus, an eyewitness account of 9-11 from someone who was serving in Congress then, uh, that would be me. Newsmax Prime starts right now. Good evening and welcome to this 9-11 edition of Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Of prime interest tonight, are we safer? It's a question we're asking this evening as we remember the lives lost in the deadliest terror attack on U.S. soil. Miranda Kahn has more from our Newsmax Prime newsroom. Miranda? J.D., that question is becoming increasingly more difficult to answer, especially in light of recent revelations. Yesterday, we mentioned a new report accusing senior officials of altering intelligence documents to play better into the narrative that we are winning the battle against ISIS. According to the Daily Beast, more than 50 analysts back that claim. Colonel Derek Harvey was on this program last night, and J.D. asked him straight up if this means our entire intelligence apparatus is in jeopardy, similar to how it was on 9-11. I think there are challenges across the board in the intelligence community with still problems of stovepiping, lack of collaboration and coordination between the 16 different agencies, and importantly, between those who need the information to take action and not being able to get that information to people who are going to act in the field on that information. It, we still have some challenges in that arena, for sure. And General Michael Hayden, a regular on our program, was on MSNBC's Morning Joe earlier, and he offered his assessment of how the threat today from ISIS and other groups differs from the threat of al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden 14 years ago. Today, threat in coming days, less well-organized, less complex, less likely to succeed, less lethal mm -hmm. even if they do succeed, but far more numerous. Mm -hmm. And that makes their problem more difficult than going against that slow-moving, complex, many-actor attack that we've become very good at stopping. You're going to have more attempts, all right? But in terms of those attempts being successful as a percentage of the, of the attempts, will go way down because, as, as John pointed out, we're arresting these people. They, these aren't the pros from Dover. These are self-radicalized. And right now, ISIS especially is happy with that kind of actor just to keep the pressure on us. And to reinforce General Hayden's point, officers just arrested a Florida man near Jacksonville, Florida, after the FBI says he plotted to set off a bomb at a 9-11 memorial event in Kansas City. That man, Joshua Ryan Goldberg, reportedly tried encouraging an online informant to build a pressure cooker bomb similar to the one that detonated in the Boston Marathon bombings. J.D., back to you. Thanks, Miranda. For more on this story, let's bring in 2016 Republican presidential candidate and former governor of New York, back 14 years ago during 9-11, George Pataki. George, as always, we thank you for your time here on Newsmax Prime. And um, Thank you, J.D. Happy being on with you again. And it's good to have you there from Newsmax New York. As we look back on what happened 14 years ago and where we are now, George, in your mind, are we safer now after eight years of an Obama administration? Uh, the answer to me is quite simply no, we are not. I think we are at greater risk of an attack today than at any time since September 10th of 2001. Uh, you just heard uh, uh, the general talking about ISIS and the fact that they are radicalizing people here in America to engage in, in attacks against other Americans. We saw that happen at Fort Hood and in Chattanooga, and it almost happened in Garland, Texas. And we know that ISIS has training camps, uh, facilities for social media, uh, sophisticated weapons, hundreds of millions of dollars, and thousands of people with Western passports. Al-Qaeda had none of that. And by the way, J.D., that's not even contemplating the idea of Iran having $150 billion to go out and support other terrorist groups uh, that are committed to death to America, death to Israel, and acts against the civilized world. George, you saw terrorism firsthand on 9-11 as Governor Pataki. As President Pataki, what would be your approach? 
it would be totally different from this administration's. You know, J.D., I went back and I looked at the September 11th report that was written uh, by a bipartisan commission and issued three years after those attacks. They actually said, just as a hypothetical, to prevent another attack, if, for example, Iraq became a failed state and radical Islam took hold, we would have to use the entire might of the United States to prevent them from organizing another attack. Well, I'm not in favor of a 10-year war, but we should arm the Kurds in Iraq directly and train them and not go through Baghdad. We should arm the Sunni in Anbar who are anti-ISIS. They're not getting the support or the help because everything goes through Baghdad. We should ramp up our bombing attacks, and if necessary, I would absolutely have special special ops go in, destroy their recruiting and training and planning centers, kill them over there before they have the chance to attack us here. George, let's continue to talk about the presidency, but the path to getting there. That would be the campaign. We recall you were the first to take on Donald Trump quite a few weeks back. Now other candidates are starting to fire back. Dr. Ben Carson reacting today while he spoke in Ferguson, Missouri, saying he, for one, was not going to take the bait from Trump. But Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal took on Mr. Trump in a speech at the National Press Club yesterday. Let's listen to what Bobby Jindal had to say and then get your reaction afterwards. Donald Trump is for Donald Trump. He's not for anything. He's not against anything. Issues don't mean anything to him. Policies, ideals are not important to him. He is for Donald. Donald Trump is a narcissist and he's an egomaniac. Now look, uh, let's just confess something. Those of us who get into politics have, uh, if not narcissism, healthy self-esteem. But aside from that, uh, George, do you agree what Bobby said yesterday uh, in, in, in Washington? You know, J.D., I think it's just tragic that we have normal, enormous challenges facing our country. We were just talking about the, the threat of a radical Islam. We have an economy that's not growing the way it should. And this, this is what we're talking about, the nonsense of whether Donald Trump is an egomaniac. To me, it's very simple. He is unfit to be president of the United States. He has gone out of his way to demonize groups like calling Mexicans rapists and insulting women and African Americans. A candidate like that does not deserve the nomination of the party of Abraham Lincoln, and I think un unequivocally he is unqualified and unfit. So let's move on and talk about what we as Republicans can do to solve these problems, to bring America together, and actually give the American people confidence and faith in our future. You know, this is America. We always have a right, in my view, to believe tomorrow is going to be better than today, and our kids will live better lives than we do. Americans don't think that today. It's not a failure of our country. It's a failure of government. We can change it and reclaim our future. George, in light of the harsh words you've just offered now, and you're, we appreciate your candor, but where does that put you in terms of what Chairman Priebus has advanced with that unity pledge? You've said some tough things about Donald Trump, but were he to win the nomination, yeah. are you going to support him? We've got about 45 seconds. Uh, I'm not going to vote for, uh, let me be very plain, J.D., I'm not going to vote for Donald Trump because he has no chance of being the Republican nominee. He is unfit to be president. He would hurt our party, and I would think and hope that virtually every one of my fellow candidates seeking the nomination would be willing to stand up and say, our party cannot nominate Donald Trump. You know, and to be honest, J.D., uh, he's not going to be president. He's not going to be the nominee. He's not going to offer intelligent solutions to the fa challenges facing this country. And let's focus on what those solutions are. We need a comprehensive But I just have to nail this to down. Radical you, Islam. George, you signed sure. the pledge, did you not? Yes. I will vote for the Republican nominee because it's not going to be Donald Trump. All right. And take, mark my words right now, J.D. He will not be the Republican nominee, period. All right. That's what George Pataki says. And George, as always, we appreciate your candor and your memory of this fateful day 14 years ago. Well, we heard what Governor Pataki has to say about the Republican nomination. What do you have to say? Who is your choice for the GOP nominee? To let us know, simply go to NewsmaxPolls.com. Still to come, with so much attention centered on Kentucky County Clerk Kim Davis, what role will religious liberty play in the upcoming election? The president of the Family Research Council offers his perspective. Later my personal perspective on 9-11, then and now. First, Donald Trump's outspokenness has him atop the polls, but is that about to change? Dick Morris takes a closer look 
when Newsmax Prime continues.